You know, I think if we keep the main thing the main thing, and that is, you know, always keep relationships before business, mm -hmm. it doesn't muddy the waters and it doesn't create that bad taste in the mouth. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. I am your host, Tyler Harris. Today we have special guest, Rob DeBoer. And we are the Sales Wolves. Oh. This is episode 89 of the Sales Wolves podcast. I wanted to bring on a longtime, close, close friend. None of them were available, so we asked Rob to come. But he has graciously given us his presence and his expertise to talk about something that, quite frankly, the only information that you've heard on this podcast may have been negative. But I wanted to show a positive light and show the things that are good about an industry that we may have talked negatively about before. Not specifically as in a whole podcast, but just when it came up, just kind of like the negative. We want to show the positive because, quite frankly, so many of you are involved, uh, and that is network marketing, MLM, uh, whatever. Uh, Multi-level marketing. Multi -level one of those Amway marketing. pyramid deals. One of those triangles. Remember that one? Uh, I just got to say this. Rob and I go way back from network marketing, and there was one time that we were uh, sharing a hotel room, and I think it was in Atlanta, and you had gone off to a meeting or you were somewhere and I got to the room first and I put your pillows in the shape of a pyramid <laughs> and I sent him a picture and I was like, even your peer, even your pillows are, are a pyramid. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, but really focus just on the good on this uh, here for the next 15 minutes. Um, and one thing that I can say just off the bat, is Rob and I would not know each other if not for a network marketing company that we were involved in years and years ago. Some of my best friends in the world, some of my current business partners were because of a network marketing company uh, years ago. So for me, that's been the biggest positive experience for me is not only was it tremendous sales experience, a tremendous um, opportunity for me to get out of my comfort zone and to experience different things, but the relationships that came from it that are still strong today, I would give my life for. Um, and so that's been a huge part of my life. But maybe give them a little kind of 30,000 foot view of just your experience in that world. And then we can kind of go into some of those specifics. You know, if, if you haven't by now, we've all been approached by a cousin, a friend, a brother-in-law, whatever it may be, maybe even a cold call. Yeah. And hey, I want to talk to you about something, but I can't tell you anything about it. <laughs> yeah. And they want to buy you lunch. Options open. We, yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, are you interested in a ground floor opportunity? And you know, I think at the end of the day, um, I've really simplified it this way. Number one, it's a very real model. Yeah. Tens of billions, probably trillions of dollars run through that model. Yep. Um, and I'm not one to sit up here and say, well, look at Walmart and the hierarchy of employees and CEOs. Yeah. That's not the same, okay? This is an opportunity that's very real in the marketplace, but I think it's gone wrong because so many people have abused it mm -hmm. and treated it wrong. And here's an easy litmus test for that. And what I always ask myself, you know, I work with a network marketing company full time, yeah. uh, call it community based marketing. Um, certainly social media has opened up the realm of how to do things sure. and how to educate and communicate with others. But it's real simple, Tyler. People will ask me, what do you do? I'm just looking people that are looking for me. Hmm. And when I find them or they help me, I try to help them. Yeah. And, you know, it, it can be finances, it can be health, it can be whatever that is. Yeah. And it doesn't even have to be business related. Here's what we do know and we can't argue. There are people looking for opportunity mm -hmm. and good gracious, I've owned Anytime Fitness franchise. Yeah. I know what it costs to buy a commercial yeah. uh, franchise model. Yep. And if that didn't make it, I could have been ruined. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I've tried and failed in other network marketing opportunities and it didn't break the bank. And sure. so, you know, I think if we keep the main thing the main thing, and that is, you know, always keep relationships before business, mm -hmm. it doesn't muddy the waters and it doesn't create that bad taste in the mouth. Yeah. And, and you, 
you create the attraction marketing yeah. versus you trying to distract people with your opportunity. That's interesting. And I think a good way for us to for us to have this conversation is based around, for me, self-awareness has been key to my success over the last few years. And a lot of people out there, they may think they're entrepreneurs, but if they really dove into self-awareness, they would realize that they're actually not. What network marketing gives you the ability to do is a very low barrier to entry to go have a business and to run it as a business and just to see, like, do you actually have those entrepreneurial skills and abilities to go build a business? And for it to only cost you, you know, 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks on the front end to be able to have that experience versus buying a franchise versus going and starting some business from scratch. It gives you the ability to experience a lot of the entrepreneurial world uh, at a very low cost, which I think is huge. And I think there's so many people out there that could benefit just from going through that process, if not just for that alone. Yep. Um, and just the self-awareness that they'll understand about themselves. Like, do you have the ability to be self-motivated? Do you have the ability to pick up a phone call when there's not a boss standing over you telling you to pick up the phone? Um, I think that's probably the biggest thing that I see in that industry is that you have people treating something like a hobby and expecting to get career-like returns. You know, they're doing it just a little bit on the side here and there, but they're expecting to be up on stage, getting big checks and having this long-term income. But the reality is for most people, for them to make a couple a couple hundred bucks, a couple thousand bucks extra a month is life-changing. Yep. And with network marketing, you certainly have the ability to do that, especially if you're involved with one that is built around a lifestyle and a lifestyle that's not completely different from yours. Like if you're involved with... If you're, a, if you're a fit person, if, if working out and being healthy, if that's a part of your lifestyle, then it would certainly make sense to be involved with a network marketing company that was built around that lifestyle and to utilize the things that you're already doing on a daily basis to be able to go and make a little money on the side. Like I, I, There's nothing wrong with that uh, at the end of the day. But I think for me, it's the bad is so glaring that it, it sometimes just, it, it, outweighs the good that's out there because there's so much good out there but the bad is so bad <laughs> and I think that that's a lot of people's experiences like they've all been hit up by that guy from high school that they haven't talked to in 14 years that all of a sudden is like talking to them like they're the best friend right and then they get invited over to somebody's house and then they got pitched right yep, yep. and so I can tell you from my experience when I was in network marketing I did it so wrong so wrong like it was right when Facebook had really kind of hit its hit its uh, momentum and it was like every single post was like you know check out this athlete wearing our product and you know why haven't you tried this and you're an idiot and like ground floor and like it was just like every single non-stop and that, that's not the way to do it yep what i think social media has enabled people to go do now is build a personal brand yep. and put out value just for the sake of value and that's what i, that I love about what you're doing is you're just you're educating people just for the sake of the education and for them to learn and for them to understand. And then, oh yeah, and by the way, if any of this makes sense to you and you actually want to get involved in this industry that I'm in, if you want to get involved with this product that, that I use for some of these things that we've been educating you about, then, then that just makes sense. It's more of like an organic uh, recruiting tool rather than just like this in my, in your face like hey I've only got eight spots left right. you know that I'll, eight more people I'm taking on this month you know get well, the, get in quick the truth is nobody wants to be sold anything correct and, but people you know, love to buy and people love to buy and and so at the end of the day I think social media has changed a lot yeah. you know I want you to think about this. Um, our focus with what I do is customer acquisition, real customer, yeah. a paying customer that's not there for a free product program, they're not there for an opportunity, but true customer acquisition through education. Yeah. Social media has opened up the lines of communication greatly for that to happen versus what most of us think when it comes to network marketing or direct sales, and that is distributor acquisition yeah. through opportunity. Sure. And I think oftentimes it's because there's no novelty products. You know, it's the same story rewritten a different way. And my mm -hmm. shake's better than your shake or my product's better than your product. Yeah. And at the end of the day, people don't like that hidden motive agenda. Yeah. You know, they just like being 
you being you. Yeah. And I think if we would just stop taking everything so personally, sure. you know, and stop being so passionate that we wear our emotions on our sleeves and mm -hmm. we run off relationships that aren't interested in what we're doing instead of just being okay. Yeah. You know, timing is everything for everyone. Things can change. Don't be that person that runs off relationships, burns the bridge, and next time you show up on the caller ID, they're not taking the call. Yeah. Man, are you familiar with uh, J.P. Sears? The yes. guy that does like the spiritual videos. Yes. Like did you ever see the video he did on cryptocurrency? No. It's probably one of the best ones he's ever done. Like it talks, it plays so into what you just said. He talks about the fact that like your your uncle that's never made money on in anything, <laughs> how now all of a sudden he's a financial expert and like it's his sole purpose in life to show you how wrong you are. <laughs> like every time you talk to him, if you would have if you would have bought this coin last Thursday, you would be a millionaire today. <laughs> like you are that dumb. I love his Dude, videos. It's, it's He's he is extremely gifted. <laughs> he is extremely it's gifted. Unbelievable. But I think social media is the great equalizer. Yep. And that's what I love about it. And you can and now more than ever, through a network marketing platform, a direct sales um, affiliate models are affiliate big. Affiliate models, yeah. Through through any of these, you can take someone, probably more than ever now, you can take someone at an entry level into a business that can excel through a compensation plan and can get to where before it was, well, you can't get, you can't join now and get over here. Like, it's just impossible. Like, social media has been the great equalizer because you have the ability to reach eyeballs all over the freaking world yep. with a message that... If I'm in your downline that I could never get to where you are, well, now I can because I can reach people around you and reach people all across the world, but you can only do so by the things that you talked about, by just being genuine and just educating people on whatever it is that you're selling, whatever that industry is, whatever the science is around that, and you're just out there just talking about it. Or even if it is opportunity-based, and you're just talking about entrepreneurship, and you're talking about the ability to go out and create a business, and, and to go out and to become financially free by putting in work, you can go do that with social media, which is absolutely crazy. Well, and I think one thing that is a sticking point for me, and one reason I respect and follow you so much is, is you're not a talker. You know, it's, yeah. it's don't do as I say, do as I do. And yeah. so many people want to be experts with no proven track record, sure. right? There's so many people that want to be speakers, want to be coaches, but they've never coached themselves to be <laughs> successful yeah. in the areas where they want to be a coach. Yeah, and so I think, true. you know, uh, social media is the great um, validator yeah. in, in many ways for some people. Look at who their followers are. Yeah. Look at how many comments, how many views. There's clues now with social media yeah. where the real content is. Mm. Um, you can find motive. You can sniff it out real quick. Yep. And I think that's what you know makes me excited about the industry because there's no doubt it's a real industry. And you know, don't forget, a lot of people have a nine to five job but they don't impact people or they don't feel like they impact yeah. people. And there's something to be said for having a mom cry on your shoulder and saying, hey, thank you for what you did for my mm -hmm. child or thanks for giving my husband back. He's a different person yeah. since being part of your group or your organization or taking your product or watching your content, whatever. Yeah. And to me, that oftentimes trumps you know, the monetary value yeah. or the opportunity. It's just making a sound difference in someone's life. And I think that's now part of the attraction. That's mm -hmm. what you're attracting. You, yeah. know, you don't necessarily monetize your content, yeah. um, but you just put out value and, yeah. and, and people will determine if they want to follow. And that's the other thing about social media is there's so many people that will watch from the sidelines mm -hmm. and you don't know. Yeah. And so eyes are always on you and be mindful. Now all of a sudden our actions do need to match our agenda. Yeah. And I think that's important for people to note. And I think that's why opportunity, especially in this space, in this mm -hmm. industry, um, can reveal itself. Yeah, you know, something you said there, I think it's so important. It's been such a huge change for me in the way I used to view people and I'll give you an example. There was a guy here locally, he was involved in a network marketing company, and he used to always come and pitch me this and that, and here's why I need to get involved. And, and I would see his stuff on, on Facebook, and I would see him going to the conferences, and 
he's reading the John Maxwell books and he's going and hey, we got this guy coming to this conference and he's going all this stuff. And I, and I can remember sitting down with this guy and, and at the time thinking he was coming from a place of compassion and, and saying like, hey man, I know you're excited about this. And I know you're reading these books and you're growing and you're this and that and self-development, but you have to judge the success or failure based on how much money is being deposited into your account. But now I look back on that and I, look, and I almost like think like shame on me because he was happy. And, and I think back to that and I'm like, like, who was I to like tell that person that he was somehow failing at something when he was happy? Yeah, you know? that's interesting. That's and, a great perspective. And so for me, it's like, that may be the best part about it. It is, it is the person that, that has a nine to five, but may have a little bit of entrepreneurial tendencies that's just leading him to something that he does get involved. And, and he's, he and he's reading, he's reading books for, for the first time and he's, yep. and he's growing. And yeah, he may talk about it too much. And yeah, he may get a little too excited in social gatherings when he, when he starts to talk about it, but it's because he's freaking happy. You yeah. know, like it's a very interesting place to be. Um, and it's a very exciting place to be. Like I, like I, I, I know what that, that feels like. And so it's, it's a weird kind of flip that I've, that I've done just as we're talking, just thinking back to conversations that I've had and almost made fun of people that were like all like gung ho growth, but weren't making any money. Like, oh yeah, look at those people. But it's like, no, look at. They, look at the smile on that person's face. You know, you know like that person's I, happy. I always take the call. Like, yeah. I, because yeah. it's such yeah, a yeah. hard call to make. Like when I walk Absolutely. into a Costco or a Sam's and there's the direct TV guy oh, yeah. and yeah. they say, hey, can I ask you a question? <laughs> of course you can. You know, their job is hard enough. Oh, yeah. And if you just help empower them, yeah. doesn't mean you're buying, doesn't mean you're joining, doesn't yeah. mean you're in. Yeah. But you know what? You might have added to their day mm -hmm. and their belief in what they're doing, and that matters a lot. Yeah. So good for you on that distinction and kind and, of thinking back through that. Well, the funny that. thing is too, like I, there's probably three products, three maybe four products that I take, consume, use on a daily basis that are sold through a network marketing yeah. or a direct sales channel, and, and they're incredible products. Yeah. And that's just the way that they were distributed yep. and and there's no, absolutely nothing wrong with that and I know someone's making a commission off that and I don't have a problem with that like like the, the idea that someone the idea that the quality of that product that I'm using every day is somehow less diminished, or, diminished by the way that it was distributed to me right. is, is absolutely ridiculous like every time I get this stuff I'm putting on my face and my wife's like hey I gotta I gotta place an order through so-and-so I'm like that's cool. Like, I love that she's making money off. I love that my wife's friend is making money every time I'm putting this hydration stuff on my face. You, know? you look fantastic. I mean, by the look way. how oily I look right now. I mean, it's just <laughs> I'm like this, like the best uh, uh, endorsement model. But man, this has been a good conversation because I think it's good to shed light on all aspects of. And it is what it is, Tyler. It is, yeah. Like, like let's just call sure. a spade a spade. It's network marketing. It's not for everyone. Yeah. But you know what? It doesn't have to be against anyone. Yeah, and I think that's the message right. is, look, there's plenty bad, probably more bad than good. Yeah. But the good, if that's where our focus is, mm -hmm. I think we can make a difference and matter. So. Absolutely. Well, do we that, have to howl again? We do. And with that, this is episode 89 of the Sales Wolves podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Rob DeBoer, let's arm wrestle. Should we? All right. I'm, I'm now, I'm How old now, are you? Uh, 49. <laughs> Liar. 33. Don't turn your wrist. I've never. Okay, okay. But, but go slow. I don't want to tear a bicep. Are we supposed to be even here? All right. We are. Okay, just go slow because I want to see how strong you are. Really? Right. Okay, go. Okay, cut, cut, cut. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> you would have beat me. Ah, and we are the sales wolves. Ow! Ah,